Hello there, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Ed Life. Of course, uh, like we always say, this program is dedicated to keep you updated as to what is happening in our country and to hold the now caretaker government accountable. Uh, this evening, I want to focus a little bit on the issue of um, a credible list for elections. Uh, we've gone through this exercise before. We've had a lot of discussions about this, but the propaganda being peddled by the PNC, um, the APNU AFC, about the need for a credible list and what can derive a credible list. Um, the whole issue of, or the whole argument about house to house registration being the only um, mechanism through which a credible list can be generated is uh, a fallacy. It is one of the weakest arguments, it's propaganda, and it's aimed at one thing, delaying the elections and probably padding the list. That's the only thing that, um, you know, can possibly be the, the motive of, of the coalition with regards to this demand and this push for house-to-house -house registration. And we are maintaining in the PVP that house-to-house -house registration it's an illegal activity, it's an unconstitutional activity, and I want to walk you through um, some, some timelines, uh, so to speak, with regards to the issue of house-to-house -house registration and why this is not necessary. As you are aware, the GCOM's work plan, the official work plan submitted by the GCOM Secretariat to the Commission, I, I think it was in February of this year, outlining the timelines for house-to-house -house registration, the timelines for claims and objections, and I'm going to walk you through them. So, like I said, the plan was submitted um, in February to the Commission for them to discuss. In that plan, house-to-house -house registration is scheduled to be a 290 days activity. 290 days. We're talking about close to a year. We're talking about close to a year house-to-house -house registration is scheduled for. That simply means there is no way the Ghana Elections Commission can complete house-to-house -house registration in time to have the elections on September 18th as, as mandated by our Constitution, Article 106 to be specific, of our Constitution. There is no way. The exercise cannot be completed within that time. So. The exercise is scheduled to be a 290 days um, exercise. It was scheduled initially to start, I think, on the 2nd of June, thereabout. But it didn't start on the 2nd of June. There were delays, and the exercise actually started on the 24th of July. We are talking about a 48. So out of that 290 days, they would have lost 48 days. So you had to revise the, the completion date um, for house-to-house -house registration. And the completion date and for the house-to-house -house registration would have been with, with the new date starting on the 24th of July. It would take you somewhere around the 7th, the 6th, the 7th of, of February 2020. And that is just the house-to-house -house exercise. What house-to-house -house -house will do is to generate a national register of registrants, which we have already. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So, so if that happens, it takes you to sometime around the 7th of February. When you reach to the 7th of February, you cannot have an election on the 7th of February or the 8th of February after house-to-house -house registration. We have to use that data. Extract what is called a preliminary list of electors, or a PLE. After extracting that list of where you compile the names of persons who are 18 years and above and who are basically eligible to vote, that list has to undergo a period of claims and objections, which will last several months. So I've uh, hired to 290 days, and I'm trying to show you when we will arrive at a official list of electors which, which can be used for an election. So after you finish the house-to-house -house -house registration, 290 days, you extract a preliminary list of electors that has to be posted, go through a period of claims and objections, several months, before 
they, they finalize. So if somebody realized realize during, during that period their name is not on the list, list they'll go and, and make a claim to be added. added. A, person a person thinks that this, that this person is on this list, list. maybe you would have died. They want, they want to, to take out that person. person. You, you, you make, make an objection. objection. Persons who move from one place to the other, other. May, want may want to change your address. A whole host of things. Names may be incorrect on the list. Incorrect spelling, that is. Persons, persons may want to go and correct that. So that's an exercise that will take several months. After which, an official, an official list of electors will be, will be produced. That, that is when, using house, house to house registration, registration we're going to be ready for elections. elections. And we talk talking here about mid-2020. Mid the, the Constitution is clear. The Caribbean, the Caribbean Court of Justice, Justice, Justice Saunders, was, was absolutely, absolutely clear when he, when he said, the no confidence motion was validly passed, passed. not, not in, in the end, I'm, I'm not using his exact words. words. The no, the no confidence, confidence motion was validly passed, passed and, the and the elections must be held within three months, months in, in keeping, keeping with Article, Article 106 of our Constitution. It can only, only be delayed if, or, 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 or can go beyond the three months, if there is a, a, a vote in support of an extension, but that vote has to enjoy two-thirds of all the elected members of the National Assembly. The People's Progressive Party has made its position clear. PPP will not be returning to Parliament to extend the life of this government. So, on September 18th, that's the final day. We should have had an elections by then. So if you go with House of House, House Registration, it is, it is going, going to take, take you into 2020, mid-2020, for an election. Are we, are we prepared to, to, to continue to breach our constitution as the government is doing? They did it when the, when the confidence motion was validly passed on the evening of December 21st. We accepted the results. Then they went with the, the crazy argument of 34 is a majority. Charon is supposed to cross, cross the floor. floor. And, a and a whole host of things. things. The Carbon Court of Justice ruled. The, 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 the three months expired. The Carbon Court of Justice ruled. We are supposed to have an elections by the 18th, the latest by the 18th of September. We are almost, what, about close to 60 days would have gone. And we haven't had a word from the president as yet. So house-to-house so house registration clearly can't work in this situation. And I want to I explain to you why we believe that the list, matter of fact, not just our belief, Mr. Lowingfield said it himself, that the current list of electors can be revised, can be updated, and can hold credible elections. So, so all we need to do is to go through an exercise, a claims and objection exercise. And on the same work plan that GCOM, pre uh, that the GCOM secretary presented to the commission, it has claims and objections listed as a 119-day exercise. But a large part of that, those 119 days, they're dedicated to training. So if we are to accelerate the training, a significant part of that time, or, or, or this can be reduced significantly. Majority of the time for the 119 days that the, the commission listed is for training of staff for claims and objections. We can accelerate the training and we can reduce the time to have claims and objections to have our elections. GCOM knows this. This is their work plan. Since February, they, they know, know that the, the, the period, period of claims and objections can update the list. And, and I, I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to start taking some calls in just a bit. But I'm going to go through this once again. That during claims and objections, you can do a number of things. And I'm going to walk you through them. One, if you are not on the list, you can make a claim and you can get registered and get on the list. If someone has died and that person is not on the list, you can go and make an objection and that person can be removed from the list. If you move from, let's say, Georgetown 
the parfait harmony or to diamond or to anna regina or to new amsterdam or to crabwood creek wherever you move you can go during that period and do a transfer so that you can vote in the area you're living if for some reason or the other your name is incorrectly spelled on the list or you're married and you want to use the, your, your new surname or if by a deep poll you had a change of name you can go and you can make those adjustments during claims and objections so what is needed for an election is an official list of electors or a list of electors, a voters list what house to house registration does is not to create a voters list. House to house registration creates a national register of registrants database, which will have persons who are 14 years and above. Guyanese citizens or citizens of a Commonwealth country who are domiciled here for a year can be registered. 14 years and above. So we don't, for an election, you don't need people who are 14 years. You need, you need people who are 18, 18 years and above who can vote. So as, so as of today's date, date if we were to take it this way, as of today's date, date we already have a national, national register of registrants. Because, because we cannot, cannot forget that, that there are several cycles, cycles of continuous registration. I think two cycles per year, where, where persons can go into GCOM offices in their various, various electoral, electoral districts, and, and get registered. You walk in with your documents and you're registered during the continuous registration exercises. We had them up to last year and we updated our national register of registrants. If there are persons who are qualified to vote that are not on that register, they can make a claim during the claims and objections period. And if there are, the numbers are very small. So this, this, this propaganda that keeps coming from the PNC and, and, and the AP and the AFC, Please, Please, don't, don't buy, buy into it. The main, the main objective, objective for them with this house-to-house house registration, registration claiming that there are thousands of young people who are going to be disenfranchised. You know, you know who are going to be disenfranchised with house-to-house house registration? Thousands of Guyanese who are in, in, in the interior working, who are probably overseas, on vacation, if the persons who are Guyanese who are living overseas who want to come back and vote, they're born Guyanese and they should remain on the list and get a chance to vote. Now these guys want to de-register those persons because if they're not present, they want to remove them from the list. They want to disenfranchise thousands of Guyanese, tens of thousands of Guyanese for their own ulterior motive because they realize it, the writing is on the wall that this government cannot, the AP and UAFC cannot win the next election. They fool Guyanese, they fool young people, they fool the farmers, they fool the cane cutters, they fool the businessmen. Every single person, the fanciest plan, and they haven't achieved a single thing. You ask them what they have achieved. So they know they can't win an election, so they want now. To, to, to play wrong with the voters list so, so that they can fisting in their favors. So, so you have to understand, house-to-house house house registration is not necessary. We have a national register of registrants database that is updated up to last year, like I said. There was a period of continuous registration to update that database. All that needs to be done is for GCOM to hold or to run a period of claims and objections so that persons who are not on the list can get on the list. Those persons who are not supposed to be on the list can be removed from the list. The whole argument about bloated list, again, propaganda, lies. The same list was used in 2015 to elect the AP and new AFC. It was used in 2016 for the local government elections. There was no complaint from them in 2016. In 2018, November, the same list was used just a few months ago for local government elections. But it was after the local government elections when the coalition government realized, you know what? 
we, we cannot win this election. Guyanese don't want us anymore. You realize that the PVP won the local government elections by a landslide, so the list all of a sudden becomes a bad list, a bloated list. 200,000 incorrect entries, as, as the president put it, on the list. How, after 2015, Elections, elections, 2016 elections, 2018 elections, how all of a sudden 200,000 persons on that list. And we've gone through house to house registration and how, how much of a waste of time that is and how that is not important to the elections and how we can update this list. But I wanted to do it again because I still see this argument and I still see the lies coming out um, from the AP and UAFC about 200,000 people and 150,000 people registered. Parted numbers we are presenting to you to give, to give the impression that this exercise is receiving the support. I'm going to say again, brothers and sisters, do not support house to house registration. Do not register. That's the position of the People's Progressive Party because we believe that the exercise is an illegal exercise. It will lead to a flagrant violation of our constitution because the exercise cannot be completed and a list cannot be ready in time for elections by September 18. Another argument that we have seen that is coming from the government about house to house registration is that the exercise will run up to, up to October. So let me tell you what will happen up to October. From July 24th, October 20th, I think it is, if I have the date correct. The field exercise, which is the home visits, them coming by you, take your information, measure you, blah, 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 and put together your, your data um, sheet. That part of the exercise is scheduled to, complete, to be completed by October. But that is not the entire exercise. After they would have finished gathering the raw data, we have to take that data. We have to do cross matching. First and foremost, they have to enter the data into the system, into the database. Then they have to do cross matching to remove multiple registrations if there are any. Then they have to do the biometrics. And there are other exercises before they actually come up with. The, the national, national, a clean national, national register of registrants. So, so the, the whole argument about the exercise will end in, 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 in October, that's just the house to house visit, the visits to the homes. When they finish all these other exercises we're talking about into 2020, then they're going to extract a PLE, then that has to go through a round of claims and objections. As it is now, we have, we have eliminated, eliminated months, if, if you're to use the current updated National Register of Registrants, which is already there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to expend hundreds of millions of dollars. The bottom line of this all is that our Constitution is clear. Article 106 of our Constitution is clear. And we must respect. If the President wants to... If he, if he wants, wants at least, least the least, to have, have some, some sort of legacy, he will, he will respect, respect our constitution. You don't, don't go about the place and call yourself a democratic leader, or call your party a democratic party, and you simply don't want to respect the constitution of this country, or any country. Why any government would want to violate the constitution? You found the excuses when the motion was passed. You went to the courts. The courts proved to you that the motion was validly passed. Mr. Grange just said, when, when, when they moved to the courts, that he will abide by the, the, the ruling of the CCJ, the highest court of Guyana. Mr. Grange needs to match his words with action. And he, and he needs to, to call, call the elections. elections. He, he needs to call the elections. elections. So, so, September 18th is fastly approaching. 
This government seemed to have absolutely no intention to respect our constitution and call the elections. This is a government that keeps telling you to respect the laws of this country. If they, they want the ordinary people of this country to respect the laws, but the government itself, APNU AFC coalition, is disrespecting and is breaching the constitution and is ignoring the laws of this country. Like I said, this government, they've seen the writing on the wall. They know they cannot win the next elections, so they decide that they're going to find all sorts of excuses to delay the elections as much as possible. Not, for the, not in the interest of you, the people of this country. It is in the interest of them, that cabal, that small cabal, their personal interest. They're protecting their perks. Good evening. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. I want to tell you something. Those people would not, would not come out from there. So we have to pressure them with the international community. Only they have to do it. Sanctions on the country, and that's the only way to be get to the fight of going forward. Because Mr. Granger would not want to give up power because they're enjoying happiness inside there and the people are suffering on the road. Right? For for work, for money, all ah, like everybody. Right? So sorry that that's my view, my point about the whole system. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming through, sir. Yes. yes. So, and that's the point I'm making. This small cabal is enjoying the good life, so they don't want to give that up. They want to hold on. And I'm seeing some of the strangest arguments coming out uh, from some of these people. Uh, let me take one more call before I, I go through that. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening, dear. And they are now telling you that you have to get your deed poll. Yes. So even to the, the, uh, even the system, the current house to house registration system is not the best system that they are using. Because there seems to be a lot of confusion. Yes, it is. Thanks for coming through, dear. Thanks for coming through. So even to the exercise, this is the legal exercise that they are pushing. Even to that, based on what this call is saying. And, and I heard a lot of complaints uh, of persons um, not being approached, homes being skipped, and all sorts of things. We are maintaining that the exercise is illegal, it is not going to be finished in time for the elections, within the, 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 the constitutionally outlined timeline, and therefore we encourage persons not to register, do not participate in this illegal exercise. Good evening. Yes, so I was about to tell you some of the strangest arguments I'm hearing. One of them, I, I, I am no lawyer, but I think I can read and understand at least the laws. People like Mr. Ramjitan, the Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, and many, many people in support of this coalition, some of the strangest arguments. You're hearing that. The government don't need to resign, <coughs> excuse me, because the Constitution, Article 1067, says the government remains in place until the president remains in place until the next president is sworn in. They want to read Article 107 separately from Article 106, 106 6 separately from 1067. 1066 says. If, if the government, government is defeated by a no-confidence motion, motion, the president, president and the cabinet shall resign and shall, in the context of law, means must resign. 
and, and elections, elections must, must be, held be held within three, three months, months or any time, time outside, outside of that once, once there is a two-third majority vote in Parliament to support an extension. Article 106.7 now says notwithstanding the defeat, the government will remain in place the president will remain in place until the next president is sworn in. He will remain in place until the next president is sworn in within the three months as outlined by the Constitution. So the framers of the Constitution know what they were doing. So when they put in Article 106.7 and it says the president, that is not to create a vacuum in governance. They say you will remain in place notwithstanding your defeat and your resignation. You remain in a caretaker capacity for the purpose of the elections. And when the elections are held within the three months, the next president is sworn in. Then the president that was there in the caretaker capacity will step down. It didn't mean that you're going to remain there for the rest of your life whenever you want to hold an election. And then you're going to, you're going to step down when the next president is sworn in. Good evening. Hello, good evening. I think, I think we lost that one there. So, so those are some of the arguments, the strange, confusing, unintelligent arguments that you have coming. That is the kind of propaganda that they're sharing and spreading among uh, people. I want to encourage you not to be caught up, not to get carried away with the kind of craziness that you're hearing coming from some of these folks. Good evening. Hi. Hi, good evening. And, um, I would just like for you to know that these people have their own place and their own people who they're going to when they're doing registration. They're walking past certain places and they got their own address where they're going to. I will not disclose mm -hmm. on air which area I'm calling from. But this hospital, my daughter was on the bridge. Mm -hmm. And she said they were passing by and they were looking at the list and saying that um, most of them is going to be at this address. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yes. All right. Could you, could you make contact with me probably after the program or tomorrow? On this same number? No, I'm going to give you my number. My number is 658-7999. Just, just a second. Um, and they're at the school next to me, and they're just sitting there laughing. Lunch coming for them, and they're having a nice time. Okay. Give me the number. 658-7999. Yes. I, I, I would want to get some more information on that, what you're talking about there. All right? All right. Thanks for coming through. Okay, thank you. Right. So, we, we saw videos to this effect where the people are walking past um, many houses and so on. But like you said, the exercise is illegal, the exercise, there, there are so many things that are wrong with this exercise. Primary among them is the fact that the exercise is illegal, it is unconstitutional, and it will lead to a breach of our constitution if it's allowed to continue. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. When um, the opposition is right, mm -hmm. that, that they are um, finished with you. Mm -hmm. This is like what's going to complain to you. Mm -hmm. I just ask them straight, this is bad, I just ask them straight. Mm -hmm. Because I say the opposition is really something illegal. Mm -hmm. That's not the way they complain. Yet. All right, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. I'll, I'll answer that for you in, 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 in just a second. All right, All right thanks for coming through. So. so Yes, yes, we are saying, saying that the exercise is illegal, and, and we encourage people not to register. <coughs> what the woman is pointing out is exactly what we suspect. We're, we're, the intention is to deregister. Lots, lots of people. That, that is what the woman is pointing out. So we're not saying that, oh, support, support the exercise. <coughs> the point she's making is that they're passing many homes, and they're going to specific homes, specific people, specific locations to register people so that they can disenfranchise many, many people. And that's the point we keep making. So I think the gentleman is a bit confused as to what 
Nicola said uh, before him? Or there seemed to be some challenge in understanding and comprehending um, the point that the woman was making. Good evening. Hello, Hello good evening. If we lost our one there. Good evening. Yes, so we are maintaining that the exercise is an illegal exercise. And we urge persons not to support the exercise. That's the bottom line. It is going to lead to a breach of our constitution. The government is already sending the... Matter of fact, the government is already in breach of the constitution because the president is saying the cabinet should continue. The caretaker government, the cabinet was resigned on the evening of December 21st. As the CCJ said, oh, you got to pause because there was a legal challenge. And if you want to work with the dates of the CCJ, as at... June 18th, the cabinet was resigned. How are you holding cabinet meetings the other day? One billion dollar, more than one billion dollars in contracts. You're not supposed to be doing that. So they're still, they're already breaching the constitution. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, good evening, Mr. Lane. Good evening, brother. Well, I'm a bit worried about our government, the president and its ministers. If these are the people, we are sending on the international scene to comprehend what these international people are saying. These people cannot even comprehend our constitution. These are the people we are putting on the international stage to defend the integrity of Guyana. <laughs> this thing is kind of worrying, man. Because something as simple as the constitution. The constitution clearly states that it's 1066. I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. Oh, you make me sound like a liar. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the president mm -hmm. and cabinet must resign. Notwithstanding, they will be there as a caretaker care government until the next government is sworn in. Am I right? Yes. Is this something so hard to comprehend? Well, it seems to be extremely hard for this government. Mr. Lane, let me tell you my honest opinion, sir. This government wants to hang on to power to grab as much as possible they can. But while they are grabbing, there is a nation on the street is dying, punishing, starving. They can't make it to feed their children. They can't make it to pay the bills. They can't make it to survive. How long would these people who call themselves man of God, woman of God, punish the nation because of their own self opinionated ways. Ms. Lane, these people went on the pulpit. Mr. Granger said he's a man of God. There's a lot of picture posted on Facebook. You know, he's praying. Mm -hmm. What really is he praying for? For the destruction of a nation or to uplift a nation? Well, you, you have some good questions. Thanks for coming through, brother. You have a blessed night, sir. You too, sir. Good evening. How are you? Not, not bad at all. This is your program. Yes. But somewhere down the line, I don't understand what who can understand, who answer it. No, you, you are saying not to register. Why we must not register? That's what I'm asking, you know. You are telling me that not to register. I am saying to you that the exercise, it's an illegal exercise. Well, how come it becomes illegal? It becomes an illegal exercise because the fact that we have, we have already Establish a national register of registrants. Right? Hear me out. All right, so let me take you off so somebody else can call while I answer you. All right, give me your questions. I'm going to respond to you after the questions. Uh -huh. There's a difference. If you have a passport, did you travel? Did you travel? Can you travel with expired passport? You're, you're comparing apples and oranges. But, but, good. So let me, let me answer you now. All right? Good. Thanks for coming through. I'm going to answer you now. All right? Good. So I think the gentleman is comparing apples and oranges. And the difference is the voters list expired. Not the national register of registrants from which you extract the voters list. 
So if the list is expired, the voters list is expired, all you need to do is to extract from the National Register of Registrants, which was updated up to last year, and you create a new preliminary list of electors. You have to first create, create a PLE, which goes through a period of claims and objections, and then you get an OLE, which is the official list of electors. So I think the gentleman, the gentleman has to understand the difference. House to house registration is not creating a voters list. It creates a national database with persons who are 14 years and above. From that, you have to extract a voters list or the preliminary list of electors as you call it, then that becomes the, after the claims and objections, you get an official list of electors. So you can compare a passport with the voters list. The voters list expired at the end of that period, but all you need to do is to use the National Register of Registrants, which was updated up to last year, and I keep making this point, and you create a new PLE, you do claims and objections, who are, those persons who are not on, who are eligible to vote, are added. Those who are not supposed to be on are, are taken off. And you have a list that is credible to hold free, fair, and credible elections. This was explained and said by no lesser person than the chief elections officer. So I don't understand, I, I don't, not that I don't understand, I don't think the gentleman understand the difference between the National Register of Registrants, and that is for house, the house registration, and a voters list, which is a, as a result of the National Register of Registrants. Good evening. Hello, good night. Hi, good evening, dear. Um, I live at Bethlehem. Yes. I think Saturday, a girl comes to register. I told her that um, everybody is not at home. Come back Sunday. Uh -huh. She said, you know what you have to get? I said, yes. And she never come back. Well, well like, we, like we keep maintaining, the exercise, and I'm thanks for coming through, though. All right? All right? The exercise, I, we, don't, we don't think that the exercise, well, we, we are maintaining that the exercise is an illegal exercise. It is going to deregister thousands, tens of thousands of Guyanese. Therefore, we encourage persons not to support this exercise. So we're going to be back here next week. I think we're almost out of time. Um, I want to thank you very much for being part of the program. But I just want to share with you quickly before um, we go, you know, some greetings on behalf of the People's Progressive Party. Um, the, I'm going to just read for you. It's a short message from the party. I just want to go through it. Iwala Dar reminds of the willingness to selflessly make a sacrifice in obedience of God. It's observances is imbued with pertinent messages from the spiritual upliftment of all mankind, offering great potential for the redounding of peace and togetherness. This sacred observance comes during the annual holy pilgrimage Muslims across the world make to Mecca Hajj, one of the five pillars of Islam. It is a journey that embodies sacrifices in the quest to fulfill religious obligations, demonstrative of the teachings of equality as exemplified in Islam. On this auspicious occasion of Idul Adha, the People's Progressive Party takes the opportunity to extend greetings to the Muslim communities, both here in Guyana and in the diaspora. The party is cognizant of the significance of Idul Adha to our country and its people. Its observance continues to exemplify the characteristics of generosity, morality, and love for others. It is a multifaceted society like in a multifaceted society like Guyana, these attributes have proven to be invaluable in strengthening bonds among all of our people and to forge better understanding and appreciation of our cultures. As our Muslim brothers and sisters celebrate Eid al Adha, once again it brings into focus the many sacrifices Guyanese have made and continue to make for self-advancement and nation building with the common objective of better life and future for all. The PUP remains mindful of the prevailing challenges Guyanese face and urges all to remain hopeful, to be inspired by the ingrained message of Idul Adha and to draw upon their resilience and resoluteness. Eid Mubarak.
All right, we'll be back here next week with you uh, to continue to have discussions and to bring to you what is happening in our country. We are, we are in a very, very peculiar place at this point in time. Until next week, thanks for being part of the program. Bye for now.